All right then, folks, it is time for a question and I want your answers in the comments below. I know you probably have an idea of what you think you want your channel to be about, but what do you think right now your audience thinks your channel is about? I know it's a bit of a curious question, but let us know in the comments below and we're going to explore the answer to that after this intro. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. From most YouTube desktop screens, click on your profile image in the top right-hand corner and go to the YouTube studio. Down the left-hand side, you'll see all of the usual menu options. And today we are going to analytics. And from the main analytics screen, you wanna click on the audience tab at the top of the screen. And then around about a third of the way down this screen, probably on the right-hand side, you will see a panel that is called other videos your audience watched. And now here comes another message from the YouTube exclusion team, because while some of you may see this panel, a lot of you will see this panel, which doesn't have any data. There are a few reasons why you might not be getting any data for this panel. It might be because you're violating community guidelines or your content's made for kids, so YouTube isn't grabbing the audience information. But most likely, it's because you don't have enough data on your YouTube channel. How much data you do need is a bit of a mystery. My old tech channel of over 100,000 subscribers still does 150,000 views a month, but I don't have any data on this panel, although I haven't published anything on the channel in over two years. So in an attempt to get a more scientific answer as to who is actually seeing this panel with data, I went to you, my beloved community, and you badly let me down. Shame. I mean, I think this is a fair question to ask our community. Go to YouTube Studio Analytics and tell me what you see in that tab. And 13% of you said that they found the panel and they had data on it. Great, exactly what I need to know. Another 18% could see the panel, but no data. Great, that's really useful information. 14% of you said that they couldn't see the panel at all, which I don't think is right since the panel appears for me on a channel even though it doesn't have any subscribers. So maybe you're confusing the desktop app and the mobile app where it doesn't yet show at all. But it was this final number that really touched a nerve. Why would more than half of you do this? Now I think what the voting poll tells me is that less than half Potentially less than a third of our typical vidIQ audience is able to see this panel with data in it. And when I say our typical audience, we're looking at channels of under a thousand subscribers, under 4,000 hours of watch time, those channels working towards monetization. However, if you are able to see this panel and you are a smaller channel, do let us know in the comments below. I think this analytic is quite similar to this one that YouTube introduced to us a couple of months ago. When are our viewers online? So when is it the best time to potentially post our content onto our YouTube channel. If you don't have any of this data yet, that's unfortunate, but try not to worry about it. As your channel grows, you will unlock these extra pieces of information that are gonna really help you take your channel to the next level. Having said this, I don't want you to leave this video now because you are feeling left out, because I have some good news from the vidIQ all-inclusive team which is basically me. If you aren't getting any data from that panel in the YouTube analytics, then vidIQ has an alternative. As long as you have it installed, you'll see this channel audit option. And if you click on it, it'll bring up a huge report card on your channel. What we are interested in here is on the right hand side, around about a third of the way down, there's a section called top suggested. For free users, you can see this, but if you are a paid user, you can click on it and see this complete list of videos. And we'll talk about that a little later. So back to this new YouTube audience tool. It basically shows you what else your audience is watching on YouTube over the last seven days. As of time of recording, it shows you 15 videos split into three pages, and you can click on either the video title or the channel to jump to their content. These videos don't look to be sorted by age or number of views or size of channel. So it's worth looking through all of the videos if you can. Now pay attention because this is the crucial part of this video. The basic premise is that the content your audience is watching from other channels should be the content they enjoy watching on your channel. And that is how YouTube encourage you to use this tool. 
You can use it to find topics for new videos, title and thumbnail ideas, and collaboration opportunities. So whether or not you, the creator, think your channel is about this, your audience thinks your channel is about this and that's what they want to watch. With this in mind, let's dissect some of the videos in our list to see if they match up with our intended target audience. It's great to see our good friends at Think Media here in our list, and YouTube is right on the money here with a video about how to get your first 1,000 subscribers in 2020. That's just the type of content we make. Nick Nimmon is also here with a video about uh, haters, trolls, and spammers. We recently did a video on uh, bullying and harassment, so we can see why that matches up as well. An interesting one here, again from Think Media, about color grading in Adobe Premiere Pro, a video editor. That's something that we don't look at here in the vidIQ channel. Uh, so YouTube doesn't always get it right with the mixed audiences, but we can see how we may one day gravitate into video editing education. Here is another video that we're very happy to be connected with, how to get 100 subscribers on a YouTube channel. But the next two are a a little cause for concern. They are subscriber battles. This is something that we have played around with and tested on the vidIQ channel before. And we have picked up a lot of subscribers from those videos, but they aren't necessarily what we cover every single day. We're about YouTube education and growth, not necessarily subscriber battles. As a result of this, if YouTube suggests our content to that audience, they may be left a little disappointed since that's something that we cover on a rare basis. Everything else on the list looks pretty good though. Again, how to get 1,000 subscribers. It really is telling us that we probably wanna do more videos about how to get a certain number of subscribers. How to grow your channel, how to get 1,000 subscribers every day, how to get more views. So let's just quickly summarize what we've discovered there. Yes, our audience tends to watch YouTube education and growth content, but they seem to be particularly interested in certain numbers, like getting to a thousand subscribers or a hundred subscribers in a day. And maybe we need to tailor our titles and our content to that particular subtopic within YouTube growth. There may be opportunities for audience crossover if we decided to make content in the video editing realm. It's not necessarily about YouTube growth, but it is part of the process. Process. And through our own fault, we've attached ourselves to the YouTube subscriber battle topic, which could be harming our channel. Can you see the value now of this panel and its data? We've been able to learn so much about our channel in two minutes. To further investigate this, a few of my colleagues here at vidIQ kindly share their data too. This audio channel appears to be bang on with their audience, although I did note that videos about getting earbuds at certain price points could be a good titling strategy. This channel's focus is faster internet, and that's what their audience watches elsewhere, but they also have a crossover interest in TV and movie streaming hardware, a potential new avenue for video content. And finally, we have a channel that provides opinion on the latest pieces of technology. And there's only one thing they should be talking about right now. It's the iPhone 12, of course. And now let's return to our channel audit tool for a moment and chat about this top suggested panel. This shows you what videos drove views to your channel, otherwise known as suggested traffic. Again, we're talking about shared audiences. And when you compare it to the YouTube panel, the results are remarkably similar. So whether or not YouTube has enough data, we at vidIQ should always have some data as long as you get suggested traffic. Your audience, as they should be, are the key to the success of your channel and provide you with a goldmine of information to help you create your content. And now YouTube is providing you with this new data, along with the data that we've always provided to you from vidIQ, it allows you to research your audience even more to create the best content for them. But you know what? vidIQ has an extra tool that's gonna help you keep tabs on that shared audience from those other creators. As we said earlier, you can click on any of the videos in this audience watch panel to jump straight to the watch page for the video. You can also do this from our channel audit tool as well. Once on the watch page, next to the likes and dislikes, you'll see this vidIQ button. Click it and then you'll see an add competitor option. This will now allow you to track that channel's most successful videos by views per hour right now. In other words, videos that are performing well for that channel today. If you share an audience, 
as YouTube already suggests, it's likely that you can make similar content that is more likely to be suggested by YouTube and, most importantly, watched and enjoyed by the audience. All right then, let's go back to that comment that you posted when I first asked this question at the beginning of the video. Now that you've hopefully seen the data, what does your audience think your channel is about? It's amazing what you learn when you put in some dedicated research. All you have to do is follow the data. <laughs>